So, um, the title of my presentation is Women and Social Media in the Middle East. In the last few years, social media has become very present in our lives. In the Middle East region, many women have become influencers, bloggers, fashionistas, public figures, etc. This phenomenon does not cease to grow and becomes contagious in all countries of the Middle East from the most conservative to the most open in terms of female public presence. The presence of these women on media networks is, um, is starting to provoke debates within their respective societies. Some of these bloggers are victims of violence and even threatened with death, not only virtually but also in real life. For instance, an Iraqi model and fashion blogger has been sh shot dead in a, in, a, in a Baghdad street recently, the latest in a series of high-profile Iraqi women to be murdered this past year. I argue that this new trend of women on social media reveals several aspects about the metamorphosis, uh, the changes, and the daily problems in the region. On the one hand, it can be read as a way to deconstruct, rethink, and challenge hypermasculinity, the system of patriarchal power, and the human relationships in these societies. On the other hand, it is a way of occupying the citizen and diverting him from real political, economic, and so societal problems. Therefore, these women participate unconsciously or uh, consciously in the submission and passivity of the citizens. In this essay, I will analyze these two different readings based on the works of Deleuze and Foucault, Power, Control, Resistance, and the recent work edited by Nahad al Tantawi entitled Women and Media in the Middle East, From Veiling to Blogging. The first part is um, women, women's empowerment in the social media era. The social and political transformations that hit the Arab world in 2011 gave a new reading of the region as a whole. Many of the stere stereotypes have since changed. Youth and Arab women are now the main participants in regional changes. Arab women and young people are thus more present in the political and so social scene and are one of the main pillars in the rapid and historical uh, upheavals that have marked the region. In her introduction to the special issue of, of feminist media studies on women and media in the Middle East, Nahad al Tantawi states that, I quote, the traditional image of the Middle East Eastern woman as portrayed by the Western media has tended to be one of women oppressed by men and religion. Veiling intensifies this image of supposed powerlessness and imprisonment. However, the Arab Spring uprisings have introduced the West to women in the Middle East who do not conform to this stereotype and have shown the Western media that Middle Eastern women cannot be categorized altogether as the one oppressed powerless group." End of the quote. The main purpose of this special issue is then to, to investigate the different realities and complexities of women in the MENA region in terms of their relationship with the old and new media platforms. Some women are aware of the effectiveness and the usefulness of the social media. The speed of and, and reach of any digital information make it possible to join a global conversation on gender equality, freedom of speech, and human rights. Therefore, many women challenged the patriarchal system of power through the media. Nahad al Tantawi cites, for instance, Egyptian activist Asma Mahfouz and Yemeni Nobel Peace Prize winner Tawakkul Karman. In Tunisia, the Arab country with the most rights for women, the place of the Tunisian woman is an exception in the Arab Muslim world. Code of personal status since 1956 in favor of women abolished polygamy and uh, repudiation and instituted judicial divorce. Thus, women had the right to education, work, voting, and the management of their personal and sexual life. However, after the two, uh, 2011 revolution and with the rise of Islamist in power, many women were afraid of losing all these privileges. This, this general atmosphere has given rise to different forms of activism. And uh, one of the activists that I'm going to talk about in this paper is um, uh, Amina Sboy. In 2013, a Tunisian female activist, Amina Sboy, is arrested for having painted femen on the wall of a Muslim cemetery to protest against a Salafist rally. 
This arrest mobilized the international movement of the FEMEN, of which three of its members came especially from Europe to protest topless in, tu uh, in Tunis in support to Amina Spoy, their imprisoned Tunisian comrade. Basically, this means that it is the first time in the Arab Muslim world that women are showing up naked on the streets. It is also the first time that movement women, known for its radicality and e extremism, contains in its members an Arab woman who is Amina the Tunisian. Um, in this section, I will be looking at the forms of female resistance that emerged after the Tunisian Revolution and in general after what is called the Arab Spring. I will mainly focus my study on the case of the female who infiltrated Tunisian society through the girl Amina. I argue that a radical state power can generate radical resistance movements. In conclusion, to question the interface of state power and the different forms of women's resistance, I will draw from, Foucault notions, uh, uh, from Foucault's notion of power and biopower. By closely examining this form of resistance, this spells out the rarely acknowledged issue of being a female member in an Arab Muslim country and how the society and the state deal with it. On March 1st, during the protest movement following uh, the assassination of Shokri Bilaid and the resignation of the Tunisian government, Amina Spoy broadcasts on Facebook a photograph of herself, topless. Uh, she transcribes the following phrase on her body. Um, she writes it in Arabic, but the translation is, my body is mine and not the source of, anybody, uh, of anybody's honor. Uh, this action provokes a strong controversy in Tunisia and in the world. Threatened with, the death, uh, with death by Salafists, she is kidnapped and sequestrated for more than three weeks by her family in Kairawan. She then manages to escape her family home. On May 19, she was arrested, arrested for tagging the wall of a cemetery in Kairawan where the Congress of the Ansar al-Sharia, a group of a very extremist Islamism, is held. After that, she was detained in jail and accused of possession of a self-defense aerosol and disgration uh, of a cemetery incurring a total of two and a half years in prison. And here her picture um, in, the prison, um, in the cemetery, and here when uh, she was arrested. On May 29, three female activists, two French and one German, were arrested in Tunis after a support action for Amina. Several journalists are assaulted and three are arrested for filming the event titled Femen in Tunisia. Among the journalists, uh, among the journalists um, arrested, uh, three work for the uh, Roger Ag Agency, two for the French Cana Chanel, uh, Canal Plus, and an independent photographer. Uh, Enna Chevenchko, leader of Femen in Paris, explains that this is their first action in the Arab world. Amina, after um, she... Um, she, the indictment chamber of Sousse ordered Amina's release on August 1st. After getting out from the prison, she did a photo shooting with a Molotov cocktail in her hand. She announced on August 20, um, on August 20 2013 in the newspaper uh, Al Huffington Post that she leaves the movement Femen. She, she explains this abandoned by the fact that Femen is an Islamophobic movement and moreover she wonders about their sources of funding. This decision was hailed in Tunisia. In response, Enna Chevenchko says, Amina did not betray the women, she betrayed the thousands of women who mobilized for her during her support campaign and thanks to whom she is free today. Uh, she gets a student visa after and scholarships through the Tunisian Associ Association of Democratic Women and Amnesty International, and then she wants to study in France, in Paris more exactly. On the occasion of the International Women's Day uh, on March 8, 2014, she manifested completely naked in Paris with six, uh, with six uh, other feminist activists from the Arab world. Elsewhere, in the company of, an, uh, of another member of the Femen, she burned the Saudi flag on May 12, 2014 in front of the Saudi embassy in France in support of Raif Badawi, a Saudi blogger and creator of the website Saudi Liberals. And here is her picture in front of the Saudi embassy. 
Amina breaks with the femen that she considers Islamophobic, but she did not stop her activism. Indeed, she has been repeatedly shirtless or totally naked on social networks, mainly Facebook, although she still shares the provoca provocative approach or method of the femen she did not adhere to certain actions as their imitation of the Muslim prior in front of the Tunisian embassy in Paris. When asked if she is aware that her actions shock the public opinion and even alienate the moderates and educated people, she responds that the aggression of Islamists in Tunisia are so powerful that they require a radical reaction that the traditional methods of feminists are not enough anymore and that what she did at least provoked a debate. This response of Yang Amina made me think precisely of the notion of power as it was conceived by Michel Foucault. In Discipline and Punishment, Foucault explains how power is exercised over the individual. Strength, threat, and fear are no longer sufficient to explain the obedience of individuals to political power. And that's what Michel Foucault shows. It is clear that Amina grew up in a conservative milieu. On the one hand, uh, parents are very strict. On the other hand, the educa educational institutions are even more so and, um, and add to all this a dictatorship policy that puts the police institution above any individual in society. After the fall of the dictatorship uh, with the 2011, uh, 2011 revolution, the elections brought Islamists back to power after a long absence of several decades. On the one hand, there were the Islamists in power, but also the Salafists who have become numerous and wielded with time. Women, not all of them, but those who are democratic and open to progress have felt that the rights they have accumulated over the years are in danger now. Michel Foucault talks about biopower, which is a type of power that is exercised over life, the life of bodies and and that of the population. According to the philosopher, biopower gradually replaces the monarchical power to give death. The exercise of this power constitutes government of men before exercising itself through the institutions of the state. It would have taken root in the government of souls exercised by the ministers of the church. In our case, the, bio, the biopower is exercised through the Salafists who consider themselves the spokesmen of God on earth. The biopower takes charge of life with, uh, with on one side the body in order to discipline it and on the other side the population in order to control it. This power imposed by the religious institution when it becomes an overpower can provoke among <coughs> the receiver a revolt which was the case with Amina who reacted to the extreme power by another form of extreme power. Good or bad, I'm not here to make moral judgments what this girl did is a form of resistance, a resistance that responds to a form of power based supposedly on religious beliefs. So after, uh, after uh, leaving Femen, Amina did not stop doing activism. She is an important figure in the Tunisian LGBT uh, association. In Tunisia now, we, um, like in the country after the revolution, the, um, they officially created uh, an LGBT association called Shams, which means sun in English, and she is um, a member of this association. She is like one, uh, one of the founders. Um, she also, she appears in TV shows, uh, like in the t Tunisian television, and she, she declared that she is, um, she is bisexual, sometimes she's lesbian, and. And now she's a single mother, like she had a child in Tunisia and she, she's a single mo mother, like she didn't even get married to have that child. Um, Amina did not st stop doing activism. She is an important figure in the Tunisian LGBT association. She has openly declared in Tunisian television, television that she has a non-normative sexual life. Recently she became a single mom. She has just participated in the 2015 Carthage Film Festival as an actress in a doc documentary film about the lives of homosexuals in Tunisia, this film has won the bronze stanit in the film. The second section of this paper um, uh, is entitled Control Control Controlling Through Media. And so in the first part, I, um, in the first part I studied how uh, we can do activism, how women can do activism through media, and now I'm, I'm trying to show that through the media also we can control the society. 
In this section, I will draw from Deleuze a postscript post on the societies of control to show how these so social media platforms are serving the politics by moving these women, uh, but also the citizens in general, from, I quote Deleuze, one closed environment to another, end of the quote. Deleuze defines the societies of control as a new monster that replaces the old society of discipline. I quote, it's only a matter of administrating their last rights, um, rights and of keeping people employed until the installation of the new forces knocking at the door. These are the societies of control, which are in the process of replacing the disciplinary societies. Control is the name Burgess proposes as a term for the new monster one that Foucault recognizes as our immediate future. Paul Virilio also is continually analyzing the ultra-rapid forms of, of free-floating control that replaces the old disciplines operating in the time frame of a closed system, end of the quote. In this process of controlling people, individuals have become individuals, according to Deleuze, of course, and masses, samples, data, markets, or banks. These women, especially influencers, fashionistas, and singers who have a lot of followers on social networks like Instagram and Snapchat, are only involved in a general policy of assimilation. The essential aim is to divert people from serious problems of equality, poverty, and democracy, and to occupy them with trivial and unnecessary discussions. I quote uh, Deleuze again, environments of enclosure, particularly visible within the factory, to concentrate, to distribute in space, to order in time, to compose a productive force within the di dimension of space-time whose effect would be greater than the sum of its component forces, end of the quote. As Deleuze explained, as we are always in a crisis relationship with our environment, the majority of women on the social media and networks are only involved in this crisis. As the person becomes more and more a prisoner of a consumer society, the family loses its educational, uh, social, and ethical value. I quote Deleuze, we are in a generalized crisis in relation to all the environments of enclosure, prison, prison hospital, factory, school, family. The family is an anterior in crisis like all other anterior scholarly, professional, etc. In this short piece, the French philosopher compares here, how we pass it from a disciplinary society to a society of control. Within the society of control, I think nowadays, we pass it from a phase where we were controlled by other forms, such as schools and other institutions, to a new form of controlling, which is social media. It therefore constitutes a new system of domination. Unfortunately, our societies are only turning in an empty circle, and even when there is a technological progression that is supposed to be beneficial, in the Arab world we only use the skin of this progression. We always remain in the superficial and the unnecessary. I quote Deleuze, we have passed from one animal to the other, from the mole to the serpent, in the system under which we live, but also in our manner of living and in our relations with others, end of the quote and the coils of a serpent are even more complex than the bur burrows of a molehill. To conclude, we must not forget to mention that three, uh, these famous women on social networks do not represent the majority of women in their societies. On the contrary, they only widen the gap between them and normal people who do not have the means to live like them, to buy the same products, to travel, and show, to show off in, um, in all the social media platforms. Thank you. Yeah. the Middle East or mm. MENA region in general societies. So how or what do you think are the, uh, for example, the rural area, you know, the, the, the stereotypes, how, how do, not only how do the society, the patriarchal society views them, but how do women themselves view such people, people from the LGBTQ community? Um, so that's my first question. My second question is that, uh, 
What was this? She saved the teenager? Are you talking about Amina, like the... Amina, the, the individual? Yeah, okay. As well as how, how is her character and all of her work, how does that translate in the bigger MENA region as well? Mm -hmm. Do you think that there, is, there are people who, who, who see what she, she's doing and think that, you know, that, that would be valuable, you know, to, lead, to follow mm -hmm. her steps in other countries? Um, I, yeah, I think Amina. She's very, um, she's very safe in Tunisia. Uh, um, the reason why is because she's protected by international organizations, um, and that's why here I said like I, I like uh, I don't know if it's good or bad. Like uh, it's it's a form of, acti of, of activism, but like I'm not here to judge it. Like I'm not supporting what she is doing though I am pro LGBTQ rights and everything. But like when you know that the that that person she is protected by like bigger international organizations what um, Joseph Massad in his studies called them uh, the gay international basically it's like another form of um, alienating the people like uh, I mean let's go and um, and save them I mean why don't save uh, I don't know the Palestinian women that they are killed every day in like in the checkpoints in Israel for example why it's only the LGBT it, so basically Joseph Massad like in his study of the gay international in the Arab world he says that these are another form of orientalism mm -hmm. uh, she is safe and she has money and she lives in the best place in, in, in the capital Tunis, in Sidi Bou Said, and like she has really a very good apartment there. And uh, even in the documentary that, um, that she did like in 2017, um, um, in the documentary we see that um, she has like a Skype session with the publisher in France and like he, he asks her, when, you, when, you, when are you gonna finish writing the book that I ordered you to write? Like she writes with like, I, I gave you money, please finish the book and send it to me. No, I need to publish it. Because he knows that the book will be um, a, best, a best seller, you know, everyone will buy it. Like, you know, an Arab exotic woman who is a gay, lesbian, whatever, and like everyone will, will like, will talk about it in the media. So even though she's not a good writer, like she, her French, I mean, she lived in Paris and everything, but she still do mistakes, does mistakes and everything. So, but she published it already, I think, two or three books. Uh, so um, it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's activism, but at the same time, you know, it's like, all um, like, the West is always there, you know what I mean? Liberal activism. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, for the rural, um, like the rural regions, like, um, um, like for, the, for the social media, like the women in social media, like, in the, like people in, now everyone has internet. Like I'm, I'm from the countryside in Tunisia. Like my sister, she lives there and she has Instagram and she follows all these girls. And she tells me, oh, why, I, why don't have like, oh, I, why don't travel like them? Like, why don't buy all these clothes that they have? So, it creates a sort of gap, like, um, like, because like these these girls that they live in the countryside or like even like they live in like in the urban area, they don't have the means to buy and to be like them, like to have million of followers and like to have buy all these expensive clothes and like to travel to all these places to Europe, etc. So it creates a sort of gap. They don't represent them, but at the same time, these girls, like, they dream because, like, the image and everything, like, it's, like, you know, it's advertising and all these things. Um, the LGBTQ, it's, um, in Tunisia, like, even Amina, she's not, um, like, apart, like, besides, like, a small, really very small, um, I don't know, category of the society that they support, support her, uh, but no, I mean she's not supported by like um, rural girls or like sometimes it's weird for them what's like they don't know what does mean even like uh, non-normative sexuality or like <laughs> being a single mother or stuff. I mean, I mean yeah, it's it's very difficult to to make them understand that. Yeah. So uh, reception in the Arab world, she's not really um, it's um, not like. In she is more in, in France, actually, because like so she, she writes in, in the in, West. In the she West. Must be more uh, yes, in the West, in the and West. also because she writes and publishes in French, uh, and in France with like um, editors and publishers mm -hmm. from France, and like she, she also like she she appeared in many TV shows in in, in France. So like her like it's more like uh, uh, France uh, Tunisia more than. So why why uh, Arab women? 
not supporting her? Is it because she's naked? This is against the values. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, or this is the trend in the Arab world that uh, women are the protector of patriarchy. Um, Again, if you look at Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I mean, that's the second part for me. It's that's like right. even social media now. It's okay. another way of controlling people. It's another way of like helping the government to stay like you know to in the, the dictatorship and like to control people and everything, like they participate. Sometimes like they participate, I mean like they know that they are like, like it's a continuation of the, of the politics of the countries. I don't know, like when I remember when, um, like in Kuwait, I mean, I mean like two or three months ago, like two, two very famous fashionista, fashionistas, like they, they occupied the media for one week because they were fighting uh, about advertising for a cake. For a cake, like and they have like six millions uh, each. Like each one of them, it has, she has at least six or four millions of followers, and like they are really occupying people. Like they, like people are like they stay one week talking about them on Facebook, on Instagram, and the media, and they don't talk about the real issues. What's going on there? Like democracy, like uh, freedom of speech, and everything. So, um, yes. So that's basically, it's like a continuation of, um, of the politics of these countries. Uh, I mean, she's not supported in these countries. I mean, maybe in Lebanon, I think in Lebanon, she, she did, uh, like, um, I mean, also, like, she cannot be supported in Saudi Arabia or, like, in Qatar or, like, so, again, it's so difficult, I mean. Why we don't see uh, more and more women speaking, uh, supporting uh, movements? as opposed to seeing that people come against her and it's not just the only But part maybe that also she is also very provocative. It's not it's not I mean she shows okay, us that's, naked. That's like right. But again if you remember the nineteen nineties where Saudi women drove in their cars mm -hmm. again this is something that it's good. I wanna drive. Yes. But Many she, women she came against her. Uh, women again, came against yes, her. Yes, so I mean like again, regardless what, yeah, you, what I mean, you like, do, it seems that women are protecting that the status quo, and this is question. yeah, a very, a very, a very famous singer, Emirati Ahlam. I mean, her name yeah, is Ahlam. 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 I mean, like she appeared on TV show, and she said, "Oh, I'm against women driving." So she herself, she drives <laughs> like she has the, like she has the biggest cars, like uh, like all the, the like she is a millionaire or whatever. And she said, "Oh, I'm against like the women driving in Saudi Arabia." But then when Salman, uh, the prince, he said, oh, now women can drive, she said, oh, that's a good thing, now women can drive. But when, because when it was approved by the prince, now, I mean, like, I'm, oh, it's a good thing. Now, like, um, she was like, oh, it's, like, really a very good thing. Now. So they, they, they look as the protectors of... Uh, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, and it's the, like, the system, mm -hmm. the it's, it's another way of controlling people through yeah. social media, I mean, yeah. like, especially through these people, like, who really divert them from what's, from the real issues, like, Correct. Ahlam, like, to, to talk about her again, like, she, um, three, three or four, I think four years ago, she tried to create a show, a TV show in uh, Dubai TV, mm -hmm. and they created, like, a huge problem, and then, like, there, in the region, and like people were debating it for months, and that at that time, um, Qatar and uh, it start. I mean, the the conflict between Qatar and uh, the other go uh, Gulf country it started, and like the like the discussion about the TV show of Ahlam, like like really took the people to the, to that side, and the like singer? Ahlam the singer. Ahlam the singer. The yeah, the, the singer, she, she tried to do a TV show, I think, four and years Malika. ago called Al Malika. Yeah. And like everyone, like it was really very debated there. And at that, at that time, the, the, the crisis between Qatar and the other Gulf countries started at that time. Mm -hmm. So really, like people like forgot that real thing, political real thing. And like they were debating Ahlam's About TV show Al Malika because like she says, like, I'm the queen. And like she, yeah, like basically it's like, uh, yeah, it's like I'm the queen and like she's bringing people like, um, as, as uh, like, slaves. yeah, it's like, uh, it's like, it's like uh, to, to show like who is like the most, um, I know, uh, the most like fun or like how, at, 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 at what point you can be my, like my loyal fan or something like that. I mean. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's another, it's another way. Like that's how I read it in the second uh, section. It's another way of controlling people. The social media. I mean, these women, um, some of them, they, 
like even in Kuwait now, like um, they made a lot of money, these fashionistas in Kuwait. Like uh, I think recently, two months ago, um, the police or like the, something in the government, they started an, an investigation like to see like because I think they they are doing money laundry. I mean, like they really make an. A, they don't have nothing in life. They just like advertising for products, like uh, perfumes, uh, clothes, food. Like uh, two two famous fashionistas, they they uh, like one or two months ago they fought about an advertising for a cake, <laughs> for a cake, and they have more than four or five millions of followers. And Kuwait, I don't know, it's like a really very tiny country. So. Uh, yeah, fashionistas everywhere. Like um, yeah. anyone, she has two million followers and three million. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's and it's like the thing that like the people they are following them and they are like debating and discussing all these issues and they are not like really discussing the real issues, like the real problems, like the policies, the politics, the freedom of speech, like the equality, the gender yeah. equality, and everything. They are not debated. Mm -hmm. so do you the way the social media is going with because, you know, it, it, it the, I mean, it still sort of is a symbol of the society being very commercialized mm -hmm. and very open or almost, you want to say, Western. Do you still, do you see? I think the conservatives also, they, um, they, I mean, uh, of course, they criticize them as like uh, showing like uh, full makeup and stuff, but also it serves their agenda too, like it, like um, because conservatives they have another type of agenda too, like alienating people through religion, through a patriarchal system, and everything. And when they see that like people like debating stupid topics uh, about oh, this this one, like she is uh, fighting with another one fashionista, and like uh, this her husband, he like uh, I don't know, he he's not her husband anymore or something, you know, like. It, it serves also their uh, their agenda, I guess. This is my um, like my personal reading of this thing. Do you think the, the, the government uh, also that maybe <laughs> the same question uh, support this kind of fashionistas? I think so. Yeah, like the um in Dubai, I think last month they were invited like so so many fashionistas who have um, influencers or whatever. <laughs> Public figure influencers, fashionistas. Um, they were invited by the by the prince of Dubai. Like I think they organized something. Um, I don't know. It, it was they organized like a big thing, like a mina big thing. I don't like I I forgot what it was, but like they were invited. They were there, like by the prince of Dubai. Like they were there and they 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 came there as a, people who represent their societies. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. Maybe the other question? Yes. So do you think this is like part of uh, women's rights, or they try to use the. No, it's, it's, an it's, an it's an image. It's an image. Yeah, it's an image. It's only an image. It's not, it's okay, not about. No, I, like this is my personal is reading. Not no, it's, it's, it's more like an image that they are say, selling themselves to the West, that we are open and like we have. I, my, this is my. It has been like this um, under Ben Ali in Tunisia for years and years. Like the Tunisian woman, it's like the most uh, free woman in the Arab society, and she has all the rights and everything. Like it has, it's an image that he, he's selling his country like this. But it's not the reality when you go there. Like when you go there and it's, and you, you see it, it's not the reality. Women were oppressed in Tunisia under Ben Ali for 23 years. They cannot wear the veil. I mean, how come that you, like, how, like, you prohibit a woman to wear, like, because she wanted to wear a veil, like, how come? Like, my, my friends, when, when you go to school, I mean, like, the, the guy, like, in the entrance, no. Either you take off your veil or you don't go. You don't go inside. Okay. Or I need to see at least your hair. Like, put it like this. So it's, 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 it's about like marketing, it's about selling the countries and like it's about getting uh, like money and like, uh, yes. So um, it's, um, I think it's, um, so in the first section of, the, uh, of this paper I talked about Amina, Amina Spoy, she's like, um, uh, she was a feminine um, activist in, um, in 2000, uh, 
2012 and 2013, and she showed to topless, naked, and uh, Amina's boy. Um, I think. Um, So that was her first picture on um, on Facebook in 2011 or 2012, I guess. She's from Tunisia, and um, so I, I I was saying in the first part that like the social media is also um, like an empowerment for women. Like you can do activism through Facebook or Instagram. Like the, this one, she was an activist, and I was saying maybe I don't agree with with the kind of activism she's doing, but at least through social media she can be an activist. You know. I mean, um, so like the, the good part of social media, so you can do activism, uh, but also the, like I, I see it as like Deleuze, um, like Deleuze in his postscript, uh, society of control, like uh, it's, it's, another, it's another way of controlling people, the social media, that's how I read it through these women um, who have like so many uh, millions of followers. Um, Sometimes, like when you uh, find like a good singer, for example, or like a singer that she she, she sings for like a cause. I don't know, like for Umayma Al Khalid, for example, or something. She has 20k followers. <laughs> Nancy Aram she has 20 million. <laughs> so like it's really a big difference. Like when you have someone who is like really doing good things and like singing for a cause or something, people they don't like <laughs> they don't follow <laughs> him or her. But like when you have like a uh, like a Pop, I don't know, pop, uh, pop star or something that she's singing like uh, almost naked or like she's, I don't know, like doing all these TV shows and stuff. Like you have 20 millions of followers, so, so the difference is really big. Yeah. What kind of social media tools do they usually use? What kind of social media? Yeah, what kind of social media tools do they usually launch their? Um, so uh, I think in um, uh, I can't speak about Tunisia because I'm from there. Um, Facebook is still like the first like social media most used there. Um, now people so, now uh, Facebook and Instagram in Tunisia like now Instagram is started um, in it started being Snapchat. in Iraq and Kuwait it's Snapchat and Instagram less and Saudi yes uh, all the Gulf countries like it's mainly Snapchat and Instagram so yes. Yeah, the Snapchat is also um, yeah, is it's yes. The Snapchat is yeah. The Snapchat is especially like to advertise for products and like oh let's I mean I give you two thousand dollars because you have two millions of followers and you advertise for my product for one week and she she keeps like advertising for the product for one week. I mean it's 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 like that. So what's the statement behind putting herself naked again? We see in the 90s of today women covering, mm -hmm. and it's more political statement more than religiosity. Yes. Women putting the veil. Mm -hmm. It's political statement. It's a challenge to the society, to the government. And I think she now women taking off their their. I their think it's because it's, also again it's, it's a political a statement. yeah it's, it's a just political, yeah. so. it's a political statement too. It's, it's because she, um, when she, when she did this, like the uh, uh, Islamists, they they came back to the to the power in Tunisia, and really, like uh, like I was there in 2011, and I saw the transformation of the country. Like you see, two or three uh, girls in the street who are wearing the veil, just like uh, like one month in one month, you see everyone is covered. Mm -hmm. So really, it's like it's a big transformation in terms of um, of like clo clothing and and stuff. So this so, is after the revolution. Yes, the after the, yes, power, yeah, so it's after the revolution. Came. Yeah, so like it's a political statement too. Why do you think that happened in Tunisia after the Islamist war? I mean, there wasn't some sort of legislation that. Ordered yeah, people I mean, to um, the good thing in Tunisia is like there is um, um, the civil society. It's very involved with in all these things. So like um, when when they feel something is going to happen, like you would find uh, like a manifestation all over the country. So. Um, the, like the government and the politicians, they fear the they fear the civil society. Um, so like even like the the main uh, political is, is Islamic uh, party and Nahda in Tunisia, 
now it's more it's more like secular than other than other uh, parties like she uh, it is selling her like uh, um, the party it is selling itself as like very moderate very contemporary islamic party um, and like it has so many women in the parliament so many like really very important women inside the party and everything so like they try to um, it's again it's about selling an image and it's about gaining uh, you know um, like people to vote for them and everything so, so my question would be my, I guess, I don't know, my, my if i may ask my my question would be how how can regular farmers right mm -hmm. not the elite who live in the best neighborhoods in tunisia or in cairo or whatever that might be how are the regular farmers or ahmeds or whoever mm -hmm. in the rural areas are actually going to benefit, and how, how, how can they have their voice heard, other than some sort of orientalist, liberal, western, you know, without the backing of all, you know. That. It's difficult, it's difficult, that's the thing, that they don't, they are not represented, they are not represented. And even if they are represented, no one, like, it's not, they are not really represented, you know what I mean? It's not like a strong representation. And um, also, like, they are, like, the, like it, this is also my personal reading. Like the 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 rural um, people, they are very uh, conservative. They are like um, so when um, so uh, from I'm I'm a country I'm a country boy too. <laughs> like I'm like I'm from rural area. I know all the people there. Like they vote for Nahda. Almost like I mean, she is um, like the Anahda always wins, like in either like parliament, constitution, whatever. She, she it wins there and where I live. It's because like people, uh, for them, okay, it's Nahda, so it's religion, and we will like we have to vote for the religion. You know what I mean? So like it is, it's 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 very difficult. It's 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 really uh, I see it's, it's a long process. It's really a very long process. It's not. It's not like today you decide to change the, like the mentality of so many people and like tomorrow we will succeed. It's really a very long process. But the thing, these, these people in social media, they are not helping. They are like making the situation worse. Not only social media, Instagram and Facebook, but also the TV shows. When I see now the TV shows in Tunisia, I'm about to cry. Really, what's going on? Why, like, why these stupid people are on TV? Like, they are really like... And it's not only in Tunisia, it's all, in all the Arab countries, like Egypt, Lebanon, it's, it's the same. It's, it's, a, it's the same reproduction of the same, the same narratives. I have a question. Yes. So, uh, so, for example, this lady, so we know like more, uh, uh, if you have like a good number of followers, it means you have a good amount of money. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So it means uh, to be, uh, Superstar in social media, mm -hmm. it means you have a good amount of money from YouTube or any other channels. Yes. When the government uh, does not offer mm -hmm. to anyone uh, income, so that's when it's another yes. a good income. Yeah, it's a good and income. We are, we are known mm -hmm. now how much the uh, superstar for YouTube, YouTubers, yes. are millionaires. Yes. Right? If there's like no income, and this is self-employment, mm -hmm. and they have their freedom to do it. Yes. Home, but in the kitchen, everywhere, it's very easy yes. to gain money. Mm -hmm. So why do you blame them instead of blame the political system? But also, most of them, they already, um, they already have money. Like most of the, these people, they already have money. It's not the poor girl who doesn't have money and she decided like to be on social media and like to use her these these tools to make money. Um, it's not her. It's not my sister who lives in the countryside yeah, who I'm, does this. I'm, sorry, I'm talking about my own experience about the Iraqi ladies mm -hmm. who they don't have anything to eat. Yes. And they started their career as a Oh yeah, that's 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 that's, that's, that's yeah, that's that's a good that's a good aspect of the social media. I talked about activism, but, but also, for example, Tara, 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 Tara Ferris. I mean, so she she got killed. I mean, yeah, almost naked, but she yeah. gained money, and uh, before she yeah. she doesn't have any income. She didn't have oh, I don't know about like her, uh, like uh, her history as, uh, yeah, but, but I know like she, she like she was very famous in Iraq and like she was like a beauty, uh, beauty icon. Like she, it's mainly about like beauty and makeup and like uh, so fashion. So she encouraged 
others yes. to follow her to mm -hmm. establish their own channels yes. and to gain more followers, to gain more money. It's it's I agree with you for, for that part. For like, example, these pictures I assume there are like the uh, followers will be or the viewers will be. Yeah, like, this one it was on Facebook like many years as ago. Much like as it's she uh, it's from her, but yeah, yeah as it's much in two thousand it's in two thousand eleven. Like at that time Instagram and Snapchat is not it's not Facebook, probably. but like in Facebook and YouTube this like everyone was talking about this. Uh -huh. Everyone in the country and uh, outside of the country. So yeah, I mean but this one, since she did this, she, I was um, uh, telling them that she was protected by international organizations. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't like, as, like, as a scholar who deconstruct and like, do all these kind of deconstruction and everything. I don't like that someone from France like, uh, come, comes to Tunis and like, rent her like, the best apartment ever in, like, in the best neighborhood and like, she has all the rights. And like, she, like, Though, like a similar, let's say, a similar girl in another place, she doesn't have what she has. Mm -hmm. Let's say, like another girl who, like who, who is, because, like she declares that she, sometimes she, she says that I'm bisexual. Sometimes she, she says I'm, I have non-normative sexuality. Sometimes she, she says that I'm lesbian. Let's say, like she was lesbian, and another lesbian in the countryside, she will not have these rights. She will be maybe uh, beaten by her parents, and she stays there forever. So. So yeah, it's this international organization that they came, it's, it's what Joseph Massad called the Gay International. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yes. it's another form of, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's very difficult. I mean, even for the writers, you were talking about the writers, I was going to, but I left, I was going to ask you like, how they deal with the notion of Orientalism, because mo many of them like, okay, I mean, Ahla Musqanmi, and um, Nawal Sadawi and like all these great writers, I mean, in terms of creativity. But like, I don't agree with most, uh, with most of their writing. They are bold, they are everything. But like at some point I feel that they are also very Orientalist. And I think this is a problem of our elites in our countries. If you are an elite and a thinker in our country, I would say 95% of them are Orientalist and I hate that. I mean, for them, the model is France or UK. It's not that the model. I mean, uh, why, why, like you say that a woman, she, she cannot wear the veil. I mean, she can wear, wear the veil. What's the problem of wearing the veil? <laughs> I mean, she, bye, thank you. I mean, you know what I mean? So like the Orient, like for me, Orientalism is really a big issue in our society. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like I love their writings, but like, um, it's okay, I mean, like, I agree with you, Nawal Sadawi, that um, why we are doing this cir circum circumcision for women, but like as a man, I'm like I'm happy that my parents like they did it for me, and like you know what I mean. So like why you're talking about men? So, I mean when like some stuff in the religion, I do agree with them. Like uh, though I'm, like I'm not a religious person, I'm atheist. But like for example, this thing, like I mean like you know what I mean. So like. The elites, uh, the elites of our countries, they are very orientalist. Yeah. They're like this is my own reading. And I think that's um, instead of helping uh, making our countries uh, prosper and like um, democratic and everything, it's like it's creating again a huge gap between uh, conservative people and them. It's um, democracy, it's not being naked, uh, fully naked. Dem um, and oppression, it's not being veiled. So, you can be a free woman, but also you can wear the veil too. Sure. Um, so this is um, what I think about what's going there. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. <laughs>